Hello, now I am going to talk uh, about software implementation and to address several aspects uh, when you do software implementation from a software engineering perspective. And when you look at these integrated in the development process, we can see that there's a close relationship between design and code. And the main point here, or the where we can start thinking about this is in terms of, well, it's coding just uh, following the design or it's just coding uh, uh, almost uh, where not smart uh, activity where you basically apply and follow the design rules. Well, the point here is that actually you need to, to, to follow the design rules, but there's a lot of uh, freedom uh, when you code and uh, where you can get um, a better system uh, for two reasons. One is the, that actually, as you know, design and uh, implementation is uh, intertwined. So you keep doing refactorings and uh, so uh, you resync the design while you basically program. Okay. And um, uh, an another aspect is that um, a code base actually is a living place, so it's it's the, um, a code base is what is shared by the, the, the team members. So actually, the the, the the real knowledge that is shared by by the, the, the team is the code base. So there's a lot of um, aspects that you should uh, be concerned about when you actually uh, program and uh, when you code. So this is so true that actually is what people usually call the living code base. So in the living code base is that uh, if, a, is, is, if a project is really uh, happening, if a project is uh, a software project is, is alive, what actually is alive is the code base. The code base is the, the place where people interact. So when people interact in this code base, actually, they need to share conventions, share a common language that they communicate with uh, 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 using the code base. So uh, the conceptual integrity of your system. So is, when you look at, at the code base, we actually are looking at, at the design, at the architecture. So, uh, uh, and you identify, for instance, code smells in, in your code, say something that this is not doesn't look nice in terms of what is our sharing understanding uh, ending of the code. So actually, the, the, the implementation phase is quite important by, because of these two aspects. But of course, okay, it's really important that your, your, your code keeps conforming with the, the, um, with the design. Okay? Ne never forget about that. Why? Because uh, if the design basically is the, what keeps it simple. So it's the design is the, 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 the set of rules that we should follow such that any member of the, the team can understand what is written in the code. Even if uh, he is not implementing that functionality, he can just look at the code and, well, it's easy to understand what is there. So it keeps some, some cleanness, some uh, uh, conceptual integrity of, of the code base. Other aspects that you, you, you need to, to, to think about um, when you, you, you do your program is whether you need to, to read or to execute the code. So where the code is to be read or executed. And of course, this is related with this uh, trade-off between the cost of a processor and the cost of uh, the programmer. And of course, uh, most of the cost of the development is related with the uh, salaries of uh, developers. So you should code in a way that the code is easily readable. Okay, so that's that's one important aspect. And then it comes the question, uh, but uh, should I worry about uh, performance? Yes, you should. But um, as you know, performance is uh, misleading in the sense that when you look at something, uh, you basically uh, ask yourself that your, your, your insights okay, about uh, what should be the performance of that piece of code of that part of the program sometimes are misleading. And so 
what is it, why are they misleading for several reasons because we have the, the, the compilers and the code generators that basically change the code and can optimize something that you look uh, like uh, uh, that may have an impact when you look from uh, at this high level and another, uh, another, and then you have caches and a lot of other things in the hardware that optimize a lot of things. So probably you don't need to, 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 to do these things at high level because they are optimized by the compiler. And um, another thing is that it, the performance of a system depends of the, uh, on the profile of use of the system. So you need to test, you need to verify, you need to profile your system according to the profiles that uh, a system is going to be used. So what, what we can see, uh, say always about performance is that all systems will have a performance problem if I use them in a, in a particular way. So what you need to do is not to optimize a system for all types of uh, use, but for the way it's going to be used. And then you verify something very interesting that most of the time, probably 1% of the code needs to be optimized. Okay, And in that sense, that needs to be optimized, probably losing some of his uh, understandability because it becomes more complex because you... But so, so what you need to do basically is do profiling, and you know already how to do it, okay? A, sec a second aspect is what are the conventions that you need to follow, okay? And you always keep discussing about, uh, for instance, when you have uh, field, uh, fields in, in classes, uh, should I use this uh, convention, this dot name or uh, underscore name? And the point here is that um, you may yeah, you may have discu discussions about which one is better, but what is really important is that everybody is consistent. So if a team decides to you to follow a, a particular standard, everybody should follow that standard. It, uh, that's the the main point about uh, code conventions is that everybody should follow the same stand, standard. And today these. Um, tools, IDs, tools help a lot that uh, everybody, because you can configure them so that uh, you, you, they try, to, they enforce people to use the, uh, the, the same uh, uh, styles and the same uh, coding styles. Another thing that is relevant is this question about uh, to comment or not to comment. And well, there are different schools here. But uh, one of the schools says that usually comments become um, become uh, uh, desynchronized from the code, so you should be careful about comment, commenting. And so the idea is that try to write code that is easy to read, uh, and only comment the code when this this is not possible. Okay. So an example is is for instance the extract method where you have this code and you have these comments here, but then you can do a, 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 some refactorings and actually you replace this code by a, a, a method that actually has this name. So you, you, you can do this and after a while you get something like this. Look, you have one method that... So you don't need the comments anymore. So that's a nice example about uh, when you have a comment uh, see if you can do a refactoring so that you remove the comment and uh, actually the, you, you get understandability without uh, having comments. So uh, some people, okay, not all people agree that 1% of the, the methods need to have comments. And in which cases? Well, if, the, if they are being codified, if it is not possible, so sometimes you are codifying it and you write a comment so that when you return to the code, you, you think about it. If it is not possible to refactor, so okay, then uh, it's difficult to understand and you cannot refactor to something cleaner. Okay, you keep the comment there to explain what is there and, and explain why you cannot refactor it. Uh, and then implement an algorithm that has a, which is complex and a, or, or have a known name, yes, so that people, before they read the algorithm, they, they have some uh, guide about how to read it. And um, of course, if you need to optimize due to performance, and then you just explain, hey, please, do not uh, refactor it to code, this code to be cleaner. This is uh, uh, written in this way so that we can get some uh, performance, okay? Better performance. 
So, and then you have the, 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 the coding rules. And this is something that you, you, you learn. So design a control structure should be followed, uh, encapsulate uh, control uh, flow structures in the sense that uh, uh, when you look at your architecture, your architecture should have a, a low complexity in terms of uh, control. And so you, you, the, 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 the flow of, of execution, the, the control, uh, so the, the, the sequence of invocations, so the, the the, the, the interactions between the components at high, at high level should be clean, something very simple. Like uh, we have in architecture, we have the presentation, the, the, the domain model, the database, and, and so on. Okay? And then inside the module, we have a little bit more of uh, this type of uh, control complexity, and you just decompose this control complexity uh, in terms of modularity. Okay? And finally, data structures uh, versus algorithms. When we are programming, you you, you should be uh, applying these and always trading uh, time versus space or so space versus time is something that you as a developer can can do. Even even sometimes is not um, uh, defined by the architecture, but you can just say that uh, well, this 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 is a better solution. It's cleaner or perform better for some reason, and so you can you, that's type of the, the coding rules that you follow. Okay, that's um, the introduction to, to, to the implementation. Thank you.